My first canopy piloting competition was in uh, 1995. It was before it was called canopy piloting or, or even swooping. It was a uh, fast accuracy competition was the first one that I did. Uh, after that I went to a couple of pond swooping events, uh, things like the Pond Swoop Nationals at um, Blue Sky Ranch in Gardner, New York. I did that a couple of times. I went down to a pond swooping meet in uh, Titusville, Florida. That's where I met Rickster, John LeBlanc, Ziggy Zygmunt, a bunch of the other local guys from Deland who are just figuring out swooping. And I thought, it's possible that I could do this as a discipline because at the time it wasn't even formed. It, it didn't have a, it didn't have a structure. It did, there wasn't a given set of rules yet. It wasn't the same every meet. It was different every time you went. The first Blade Running events uh, started in uh, kind of the mid '90s, like '95, '96. I got fortunate to get involved in going to those early competitions on behalf of Flight Concepts in '95 and '96 in uh, Squaw Valley, California. Um, B.J. Worth kind of conceived of the idea of setting up like giant slalom runs with blades and um, jumping out of helicopters and flying through like a timed event. Back then, there wasn't any technology allowing us to, to have a razor beam across the top of each gate, so there was a lot of judging, you know, it's definitely open to interpretation. Um, the course was aggressive enough that we had to really lay the canopy over on its side and it's very easy to, to slip out of the course. And I saw this advertisement for the 1998 blade running event and I really wanted to go, man, I wanted to go so bad. And I just wasn't in a place where it was something that I could make happen for myself at the time. I was living off of nothing in a van, making five dollars an hour. A lot of people probably don't realize that the PD Factory team started as a FS four-way team. That was 1999. We'd load organize uh, formation skydiving jumps and then do demos. And then we did that 99, 2000, third place at the World Cup in 2000. A couple of the uh, teammates decided to kind of move on. So it was Shannon and I were sort of left wanting to continue with the project. And some of the early swoop competitions had just started. So they decided to shift the project into a canopy team and they basically told Shannon and I to go find two teammates. I ordered a Velocity, I made a decision to go with the with PD as my canopy of choice based on having tried everything. So my decision to be a member of PD, the PD factory team, it came before the factory team even existed. And I had come to Florida thinking I was going to apply for sponsorship and ask for PD to support me on my mission that I was already going on. And then I thought, you know what, I know a better way to do this. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna ask for help. I'm just gonna go do it and I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna win and then they're gonna want me. So we went out and we thought we were, you know, really badass because we had several thousands of jumps together doing formation landings and we went to the first two-way event in canopy piloting that was out in Paris Valley and we were like super synchronized, you know, we knew we were gonna win this event. And uh, <clears throat> there's these two guys that were competing and uh, they were complete, they didn't know each other before that competition it was very obvious. They just showed up for the meet and then made a pickup team and it was, it was Jay and Heath. And uh, they were like communicating really well together, they were flying really well together and then they kicked our ass. So we figured the, those guys would be pretty good teammates. I think I called Jay and uh, he, Shannon called Heath and uh, that was the beginning. That's what started it all. You know, I put the time in, I put the love and the compassion into it and showed up at the meets and started collecting medals and went for some silver medals to some gold medals and then got the invitation from Ian and Shannon. Hey, you guys wanna come join us? Be part of this team we're thinking about putting together? And I was like, man, yeah. nailed it. The very first meet that we went to as a member of the PD Factory team was Red Bull Blade Raid in Utah, flying down the mountains. Uh, it was spectacular. Coming through the entry gates on the top of that mountain, 11,000 feet above sea level, flying a 79 or an 84 velocity, you're passing the gates at 80, 90 miles an hour, and continuing down the mountainside, 
whipping hard turns left and right through these big tall entrance gates, these flags, and it was dangerous. It was scary, but it was exciting. And it was kind of opportunity you don't pass up when you're at that phase in life. I was a part of the very first Icarus Canopy factory pilot team. And that was um, the first opportunity I had to compete against the Performance Designs factory team. Well, after a few blade running events, uh, a couple uh, organizers, uh, Jim Slayton and Lyle Pressey, started uh, coordinating swoop competitions on the ground using blades. Reggie Asta from Australia kind of conceived of the whole wind blade concept, and he organized the fir first several events in California, uh, along with um, Lyle Pressey on the East Coast, organized an event in Daytona Beach, and they were basically similar kind of like you setting up a course of blades you never really knew what the course was going to be until you showed up that's what was kind of cool about it, it was going to be a carving course or a distance course or flying down kicking kicking noodles or something it was a uh, early the early days were just uh, totally based on piloting ability then red bull got interested in the event as a kind of a, new, a newcomer about the same time as the Pro Swooping Tour was formed um, by uh, Jim Slayton and Lyle kind of combining into like a five or six stop tour around the country. And Red Bull did the same thing the following year. Uh, Jim Slayton and Lyle Pressey put a lot of work into creating a structure for canopy piloting, taking it to the IPC, FAI, and, and legitimizing canopy piloting as a sport, taking it out of pond swooping, turning it into canopy piloting. And yeah, it was kind of its heyday of competitions. It was decent prize money. It was about these 25 to 30, nah, I mean, more like 20 dudes that would show up uh, at all these competitions. There was a precision aerodynamics team, there was the PD team, and then of course there was the original Icarus uh, Team Extreme. We ended up uh, bringing on Francisco Neri, I believe, for the second year, and his job was to s capture, capture footage, capture still imagery for the magazines, and then compile everything, videos, into like a DVD at the end of the year that we would then promote the team with. In the top spot, again, the United States, Keith Richardson. And because, because it's official, and because this is finally real, you are now a world champion. It was in 2005 where Heath, after he had won his, the first and only World Cup, um, he had won that and he, had, he decided to step down. And then we brought this, this young phenom, Jonathan Tegel, on board, uh, who was doing the tour on his own, on his own nickel, and uh, just killing it. So we brought Jonathan on, I think, late 2005-ish, uh, and at the we did the 2005 year with Jonathan and Cisco. Then Cisco left, and we filled Cisco with uh, this guy from Team Extreme called JC Coclasure. And so I remember sending this old VCR tape and um, hunting for some some sort of sponsorship. And he was uh, obviously a very talented camera flyer, so we invited him on. And it was right before the World Cup was to be scheduled, which was in Lake Wales, Florida, and a hurricane leveled the place. Um, so the, that World Cup got postponed to February or March 2005. It's also in Lake Wales. So Jonathan, six months on the team, a very new jumper. I mean, he, was, he had been jumping for like five years and had progressed right to the, the highest levels, and he won the World Cup. First year on the team, within six months on the team, um, so that was, a, that was a big start for us, you know, like first year Heath wins it, we trade places, and the next year Jonathan wins it. 2005 to 2010 was, was kind of my era. That's when I was at the top of my game in, in canopy piloting, uh, also four-way. So Ian and I both won some national championships. Ian won a World Cup during that time, and then all of us on the team were winning, you know, some random events here and there, but. I think what overshadowed everything was Jay was 85% of the time he was winning every single meet. And it was awesome. I mean, we were 
usually two or three of us on the podium. And in fact, our goal was, you know, to have a podium sweep at every meet. That was always our focus. And, and we didn't do it often, but when we did, it was, it was like the, the pinnacle moment. It's the world championships, the every other year cadence that, that skydivers are, are training and working to. So it's at those events the, that are the biggest events, most competitors, the, the strongest field. And that was what was most impressive to me is that Jay won two world championships consecutively um, on top of his, you know, seven world titles altogether. In 2009, we decided it was time to start working on the future generations of the factory team. When you create something like the PD factory team, it's not just throw some money at some guys and let them go compete and yay, you get this legacy of competition, this legacy of performance, this legacy of achieving your dreams, right? That really takes a lot of hard work and dedication and sacrifice. So we dreamed of this project called the X Project. On behalf of the Performance Designs factory team, it is my pleasure to announce that we are expanding this project. As of September 1st, we are accepting applications for additional team members. If you've followed our journey over the last six or seven years, then you're probably aware that this team is a brotherhood. We are looking for exceptional pilots, but more importantly, we are looking for strong characters with integrity and a strong work ethic. We ended up getting like 100 applications. Um, we had this video interview process for the semifinals, and then those 12 people that were selected for the semifinals went to the land that uh, we did like a week-long tryout almost. And we did all kind of tests and, and you know, proofs and exercises and questionnaires, and there was some jumping involved, but obviously once we got there, like the PD factory team guys, they, they knew everybody's performance skills in the air. I think they were more interested in seeing how everybody reacted and behaved in a team environment. Out of that process, we selected uh, the second generation, which was Pablo Hernandez, Jessica Edgington, Tommy Delabac, Brian Basher, and Ian Drennan. So we added, we doubled the team in 2009. And after Jonathan's uh, passing in 2012, we brought on uh, Gage Galley and Ju Julian Guillot from France in 2012-2013 time frame. We invited them to a training camp. They just trained alongside of us. And then we had some serious sit-down conversations with them that in our minds were the equivalent of some of the tryout processes that we had run before. And now the most recent expansion, 2017. Uh, bringing on uh, Justin Price and uh, Travis Mills just a few months ago to complete out the, uh, the, the new young guns. So they would be, two, three, they would be fourth generation now of factory team members in 15 years. Feels like a dream come true for me. You know, it's been something that I've been, uh, been after for, for a long time, all the way from the original X project, you know. Being on the factory team, I mean, really gives me a chance to to uh, step it up, you know what I mean, in, in the swooping world, and, and uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier, to be honest with you. I always looked up to the, the factory team, you know, and watching those guys, watching their videos, uh, it was always like something I kind of aspired to. Some good competition history and, uh, you know, some people that are really trying to excel in and out of the sport so it's really really cool to to be a part of that and see if uh, I can't contribute in any way you know so totally happy back in the day when pawn swooping was a thing when it was about swooping the pawn rather than swooping the gates there was a an event called canopy expression people started doing rad stuff that you just you wouldn't see otherwise Here's the thing about freestyle. I mean, in 2003, you know, hanging out talking with Jim Slayton, he told me that he's got some new event coming up, that he's talking about freestyle, that this is gonna be the future of the sport, that this is, you know, this is where it's all going, this is what everybody's gonna be into. So it was inspiring to me to hear Jim talk about these things, and when I heard that, I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna be the first one to go do this. <laughs> Wow. 
So they created a dive pool. They built it off of uh, diving, uh, skateboard moves, uh, motocross moves. They kind of pooled together a bunch of different types of freestyle elements from different sports. And I absolutely loved the event. I was sad to see that it kind of tapered off in interest, but it's nice to see it's coming back again. It's great to see that freestyle swooping is starting to regain interest and people are beginning to train it once again. Like they are for the last two years, they have been doing the competitions inside Copenhagen, like inside the city, like in one of the rivers, in one of the canals, where a lot of spectators, a lot of citizens can get close and around the, the river and canal and just watch the event. And I think, I think that's our future. For those seconds, for those jumps, for those opportunities in that competition, when you know everybody's down there watching and looking and cheering, like, it makes you feel good, man. You know, I'm a really avid believer in the concept that you can have anything you want in your life. If you want something in your life, if you believe that there's something that is important enough to you that you're gonna make it number one, that that's gonna be the most valuable thing in your life, then you just prioritize. You push that to the front and you push away the other things that may be impeding that and you make it the most important. And if you do that, chances are you're gonna be successful. Chances are you're gonna find your way to your goal. Man, there is no doubt to me that whoever wants to make this team in the future, near future, long term, short term, if they have the desire and they want to train and they, and they want to be there, there is always a possibility and an option for everybody. And, and I'm the living proof, you know, I'm the living proof. I'm, I'm from Spain. When I joined the team, I was barely speaking English, like barely, my English was just horrible, you know. Whoever you are, wherever you live, like doesn't matter what nationality you, you, are, you have, doesn't matter where you come from, if that's your goal and you, you're willing to work hard for it, there is going to be a space for you and, and you, can, you can get it, you know, just go and, and do the effort and, and take it. Like you can, you can get it, man. It's, it's really, really possible. You don't understand my